Hey everyone, my name is Gamer Cory, and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial video. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to build a very, very simple and very basic unloading system for a hopper minecart. Now, this one specifically I do use in some of my more smaller functions, and I've actually been requested a few different times to actually build this so you guys can actually have a tutorial on it. So um, specifically, I was asked how, how to do this on some of my live streams. So if you guys are wanting to join me in some of my live streams, I do stream Minecraft a couple times a week, but I do live stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The games do vary and Minecraft being one of them. And then I am gonna live stream on other days. So make sure you guys are subscribed with all bell notifications turned on. So you guys can come on in and ask me any type of questions, Minecraft or even another game that I play here on the channel or a few other things. So let's get into this build. Now, I built this one specifically for my slime farm as I didn't need to have a massive unloading system. And a lot of people thought it was actually really, really cool and kind of fairly compact. I do have other designs that I could easily show you guys if you guys want to have multiple rails right next to each other. And if you guys have like bigger applications, say like a massive uh, sugarcane farm or even a massive mob farm where you need to be able to collect a ton of drops very, very quickly. So uh, them, those are going to be like separate videos. So definitely stay tuned for that. But this is how it kind of works. So let's go ahead and switch on over here. And I'm going to show you how this actually works. Uh, this in this case, we actually have an on and off switch that can be controlled remotely. Uh, you don't necessarily have to put it there. You can actually put it off uh, to the side. You'd actually put it onto this block right here on the side or on the back of it if you want to have it manual like that. But if you kind of come down here and I'm just going to go ahead and throw out, you know, 16 on on each side of these uh, tracks right here. We're going to go ahead and turn the system on and then it's going to go down and grab those and then it's going to come down and this is going to spit them out very, very quickly and they're all going to be sent right back to me. And then as soon as it's done unloading, the minecarts will basically set, be sent right back down the track again. And there's no delay from the hoppers actually grabbing from the from the mine carts and it actually being dispensed. Now I've definitely seen other designs where it holds it into the system, um, and then once it actually is completely unloaded from the mine cart, and then the mine cart is sent off again, then it will finally start dispensing all the items. This one is instantaneous and it's very very easy to build. So I want to show you guys exactly how to build it. So uh, I would use this for like some of your smaller designs, like I was mentioning before, like a uh, very simple slime farm maybe simple collection farms, like even your witch farm. Some of these would actually be just fine for some type of collection system. But anyway, let's go ahead and show you guys what you guys are going to need in order to build this. So let's go ahead and open up this chest. Now this is going to be per system. So if you have multiple systems, you're just going to double this or triple it or quadruple it, depending on how many you guys want. So this is per system. Now, you're going to need two sticky pistons, one hopper, one dropper, one redstone torch, two observers, three pieces of whatever material you're going to be building with. It could be sandstone, it could be quartz, stone, bricks, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we have to have a fence gate of some kind, two comparators, one redstone block, and then obviously a hopper minecart. And then we have an on and off switch if you guys want to make sure that you guys turn it on and off. And then however many rails you're going to need, it could be powered or regular completely up to you i'm using all powered rails but if you guys are if that's too expensive for you guys you guys can kind of change that up now just kind of keep in mind that if you're not very familiar with the rails that you guys are going to need the back the back one here and that one down here you will probably want to get it powered at least to make sure that it has enough momentum to keep going back and forth so you will need a few of them for this build but Let's go ahead and build it. Let's go ahead and break this and show you guys exactly what you guys need to do. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to place down our dropper. It doesn't matter which direction that you face it, but it will depending on where your rail is coming. Um, it only goes off basically to the right or left of wherever your rail is coming at. So if your rail is going this way, then you're going to want to have it spit out that way or that way. So we're going to face it that way. And then we're going to have the... Uh, the hopper go right into that dropper and then we're going to grab our two comparators and put them on both the hopper and also the dropper just like that on the back of the where the hopper is at you're going to place a block 
and then a block on top of that comparator. You're going to grab your redstone torch with another block, and then your blocks are pretty much done. So you got this kind of diagonal pattern going on. Then you're going to grab one of your sticky pistons, and you're going to put that there, and it's going to fire because it's ready to go. You're going to put a redstone block on that sticky piston with a fence gate below it, and it's going to open it up right away. Now, if you were to put your lever that we grabbed here earlier, right here, you'll see that that fence gate will actually close because it's not being powered by anything. And you could actually reverse this. I mean, you could if you really want to, but you don't need to. That's not what we're going to be doing in this episode. Uh, so that's what you need to do for that. So now this is your whole controlling mechanism right there. And then at this point, you're going to want to put your powered rails. You're going to want to shift, put it on top of that hopper. And then that is obviously the stop for it. And then you're going to go out however you, many you need to whenever it dies. And then you can actually go ahead and place another redstone block there and go out for however long you need to. And if it dies, then just replace that, that block. Easy peasy. All right, so let's go ahead and put our stone there. And that is our railway. So now we need to finish the system on the dropper right here. So we're just going to punch out that block right behind and below that comparator. You're going to put a sticky piston facing upward. Just like that. And then what you're going to do is you are going to go ahead and grab your, um, your observer. And you're going to have one facing that way. And then you're going to have one facing this way, just like that. And it's going to run, but that would be off. That would be on. There we go. So now it's actually unpowered. Perfect. So now what you need to do is just grab your hopper minecart, put it into place, and it's going to basically rest on that slant right there. So as soon as that that defense gate is released, the hopper minecart should go. And if it doesn't, you might have to give it just a little bit of a push that first time that you guys go ahead and do that. And it looks like it's actually not quite long enough to get that signal. So let's go ahead and move that signal up just a little bit right there. It looks like that might be causing the problem. There we go. Perfect. And then we're going to have to do the same thing down here. Let's just bring that one just a little bit closer. And then go ahead and throw our hopper minecart on it again. And there we go. You want to make sure that that signal is actually set up at the maximum length. Now you can obviously put as many of the redstone blocks or you could even, you know, go below and power with the lever below. It really kind of depends on what is your needs for the system. But that's all it really is needed to create this. Now we can just actually throw um, a few of our items on that track there and you'll see that as soon as that hopper picks it up it's going to close that fence gate. It's going to start spitting them out immediately and as soon as that hopper minecart is completely empty it's going to send it back down the line and then whenever you need to go ahead and reset it you just go ahead and close that one. Now if you are wanting to uh, remote it from anywhere else what you would do is you'd actually just come off of any direction from from this block right there doesn't matter which way you're really coming from because it's going to be just fine either way and then you would uh, have your redstone line coming from say this this angle here and then you would actually pull it out like that and then that would actually st that would stop the mechanism make sure that you guys get rid of that other lever that was there and then as soon as you're ready to start the system up again or you could even do it by a trip wire say like something in say uh your a slime farm is trip wired with it so a slime jumps through it you could actually have a signal sent to it and then it would actually go ahead and start that and then as soon as it's undone it would actually go ahead and just stop it so then when it comes back into the station whatever it has picked up then it will actually just go ahead and finish it up everything there's a lot of different applications that you guys could easily do with this it's completely up to you how automatic that you really want it to be. But that really is everything in today's episode. If you guys did enjoy the episode, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. And honestly, a thumbs up does mean a lot here on the channel because it helps me out a lot. It could help out somebody else because if it helped you out, help out somebody else. And honestly, it does show your support here on the channel. And like I was mentioning earlier, if you guys want to check me out on some of my live streams, definitely make sure that you guys are doing that. I would love to see you guys join me on the live stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays and other days as noted. But again, you know what to do if you guys did enjoy. But until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it. And you guys stay gaming.